Welcome to my channel. I'm Max and I'm excited to share with you my latest project, a mechanical digital clock that I've been working on. Not everything is perfect, but I hope this project will inspire you and teach you new skills. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee and let's get started. This is the current state of the 3D model. I designed the clock in Fusion 360. The outer ring will tell you the minutes and the inner circle will tell you the hours. But now let's take a closer look at the inside of the clock. In the inside of the clock we can see two NEMA 70 motors I salvaged from a broken 3D printer. And my plan is to machine the big parts out with the CNC, print all the gears with the 3D printer. And for the letters my plan is to use these thin strips of wood which I hopefully can laser cut. We will see if that works. But now let's get back to the 3D model. This will definitely not be the final version of this 3D model because I haven't built a clock yet and I'm pretty sure I will change some things along the way. So now let's get straight to the build. I started with machining the two upper discs and the gantry barely was able to pass the workpiece but anyway the machining worked out just fine. I checked if the two gears engage properly and it seemed to work just fine. Now cut out the base plate but as you can see there's a gap between the bracket and the base plate that's because the stepper motor is a little too big um, I designed the bracket with a shorter stepper motor but that is not a big deal I will just cut out the excess material and then the stepper motor with this bracket should fit perfectly and I don't have to print a new bracket and that is exactly what I did and now the stepper motor fits perfectly. The next step was to test if I could cut out the numbers out of beechwood with the CO2 laser cutter and I was surprised how easy that worked out. The numbers came out very clean. I also cut out these paper templates so I can just place them on top of the watch. So I can just place the letters inside the template and they will be perfectly aligned. But first I have to paint the MDF and then I can glue the letters on. MDF soaks up spray paint like crazy so I primed it first and between layers I gave it a quick sanding for a smooth finish. Now I glued the template to the ring and I will start gluing the letters inside the template and onto the ring. And for that I will use super glue. It was a quite satisfying process gluing the numbers onto the clock, so my girlfriend was happy to help.
Now that the cat has given the thumbs up for the watch style, we are ready to move on to the next thing on our list. And our next step is to 3D print these parts that will hold the big lazy Susan bearing in place. I printed these spacers, but when I put the outer ring on top of the spacers, you can see that the ring doesn't pass this gear. So I printed a new spacer, which is just a little bit taller, 2.5 millimeter taller. And now when I test it, you can see that the, that the ring just barely passes this gear and that's perfect. Now I will just have to print two more spaces. The next step will be to fit this inner ring um, onto the stepper motor. Um, the shaft of the stepper motor will sit in this hole, but I will have to design some spacers that will connect to the base plate. Now that I screwed the aluminum window to the clock, the mechanical part of this project is done and I can move on to the electronics. The electronics mainly consists of two stepper motors and their corresponding drivers, a microcontroller, in this case an Arduino Nano which acts as the brain of the whole setup, a real-time clock which accurately tracks the time, and a display with two buttons enabling me to set the time. Initially I manually set the time in the code, but later I added the display for easier time adjustment. As you can hear the stepper motors are very loud. That's because microstepping isn't enabled yet. And when I enable microstepping, the stepper motors should be a lot quieter. Now micro stepping is enabled. Normally a NEMA 17 motor needs 200 steps per revolution and micro stepping breaks those steps into tiny little ones, making your motor move super smooth and a lot quieter, as you can hear. I now set everything up. I set the time to one o'clock and I think now it's time for the first test. Now 
now that I've completed my initial test, I'm faced with the first major problem. I was aware of this issue even before designing the clock, but I had hoped that I could solve it through coding. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. The problem comes from the fact that the stepper motor has 200 steps per revolution and even with micro-stepping, which results in 3200 steps per revolution, that doesn't cleanly divide by 12 or 60. So after a few hours there will always be some degrees of deviation, which is simply unacceptable for a clock that should run reliable. I've came up with the solution which involves adding magnets for every minute and every hour so that the dials will snap into the right position. It may not be the most elegant solution, but it will certainly work. However, to implement this, I will need to cut some pockets in the dials to hold the magnets. I set the wrong set distance, causing the router to go right through the dial, leaving a hole. It was quite frustrating, but I was able to fix it and give it another try. Okay, now let's try this again. Everything worked out fine this time, no issues. The magnets were a little loose, but nothing CA glue couldn't handle. For prototyping and testing I used a breadboard, but the breadboard is massive and it also doesn't look very nice. So my plan was to solder everything to a perf board like I did for my watch winder. It looks pretty nice, but because I already invested so much time in this project, I thought for this project I would design my first custom PCB. And that is exactly what I did. Since the last update I have did quite a bit of testing and made some changes and now the clock works really well. There were some issues with the stepper motor struggling to turn the dials due to too much friction. For example, this gear was rubbing on the inner circle, so I printed a thinner one and now the clock works perfectly. With these two buttons you can set the minutes and then you manually turn the dials. There's a little battery for the real-time clock so that it can track the minutes even during power losses or when you disconnect the clock from the power. Now I just have to add some brackets and we can hang the clock to the wall. I hung the clock in the living room because I think it looks quite nice on this wall. However, later I will hang the clock over my desk again because it will be more useful there, because we already have a clock in this room. Thank you for joining me on this journey of building a custom clock. It was an exciting and challenging project and I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. If you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing, your support means a lot to me. Feel free to leave any comment or question down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. Thanks again for watching and I see you in the next video.